Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to take a minute to encourage you to visit our interactive website at www.mindsetmatterspodcast with the numeral one.com. You can view the blog there, which has pictures which go with each of the episodes, and you can leave a voicemail or write in. Um, the information for today's episode came directly from Candace Leitner's wiki page found at CandiceLeitner.com. I really hope that you give this episode a chance. It's not a stance against alcohol consumption, but it is a dialogue on the issue of impaired driving, which includes drunk, drugged, and distracted driving. Um, it's a conversation that needs to be had as innocent people are hurt or killed every day. So please be open to um, dialogue and thought on this important subject. Step into the dynamic world of Candace Lynn Leitner, a force of nature whose unwavering commitment to change has reshaped our society. Join us as we unravel the riveting story of this relentless advocate whose tragic personal experience led to the founding of Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Get ready to be captivated by the compelling tale of a woman who turned her tragedy into a crusade and whose impact continues to save countless lives. Welcome to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the life of one such individual. This is episode 18, The Courage to Turn Grief into Action, The Hero Heart of Candace Leitner. Candace Leitner was born on May 30th, 1946, in Pasadena, California, the daughter of Dykes Charles Doddridge and Catherine Carib Doddridge. Her mother was born to Syrian immigrants in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and in 1944 joined the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps as a private first class. She met and married Army Air Corps Master Sergeant Dyke Stodridge in 1945. As a military family, the Doddridges raised Candace and her sister Kathy all over the world, traveling to numerous countries and living in Guam, France, and Germany. Candace spent a year at boarding school in Verdun, France, and graduated from Armijo High School in Fairfield, California in 1964. Following her years at American River College in Sacramento, Leitner worked as a dental assistant and later married Air Force officer Steve Leitner. In 1970, the Leitners moved to Kadena Air Force Base in Okinawa, Japan, where Steve was stationed. There, Candace helped to establish a drug program for heroin-addicted military personnel, a suicide hotline, and a center for troubled teens. In 1971, Leitner worked with the American Red Cross, counseling military families who were experiencing personal and financial hardships. Leitner gave birth to identical twins Kareem or Carrie and Serena prior to her marriage to Steve Leitner. The couple had a son, Travis. Leitner settled with her children in Fair Oaks, California, and worked as a real estate agent there. The couple later divorced, and Candace continued to live in Fair Oaks with her three children. On May 3, 1980, Candace's world changed when her 13-year-old daughter Carrie was struck by a drunk driver while walking to a church carnival with a friend near the family's suburban Sacramento home. The car, which never stopped, swerved into the bike lane where Carrie was walking and hit her with such force that she was thrown 125 feet. The driver blacked out behind the wheel briefly before continuing home without stopping to help Carrie. Carrie Leitner died within the hour. Four days after Carrie was killed, the California Highway Patrol arrested 47-year-old Clarence William Bush, determining that he had been drunk at the time of the crash. 
Candace Leitner learned that Bush had been arrested for another drunk driving crash the night before he killed Carrie. He was released on bail in the morning and stopped at a neighborhood bar. On his way home, he hit and killed Carrie. Leitner learned that the crash that killed her daughter was Bush's fifth drunk driving offense in four years, and that he was driving with a valid California driver's license when he killed her daughter. In November 1980, Bush pleaded no contest to vehicular manslaughter in a plea bargain arraignment, and he was sentenced to two years of incarceration, serving 16 months in jail, labor camps, and halfway houses. He still had a valid California driver's license and was allowed to drive to and from work and to and from home on the weekends. He was paroled in September 1981. The crime that took her daughter's life was not the Leitner's first experience with impaired drivers. Years earlier, Leitner's mother and daughter Serena had been injured in a crash caused by another drunk driver, and shortly after this incident, an unlicensed driver impaired by tranquilizers hit Leitner's then four-year-old son Travis, leaving him with numerous critical injuries, including a collapsed lung, broken ribs, and a fractured skull, which caused permanent brain damage. He was in a coma for four days. In the days following Carrie's death, Leitner learned that over the past decade, 250,000 people had been killed in alcohol-related crashes, and another 660,000 had been injured. Here are some current driving statistics. One alcohol-related death occurs every 52 minutes in the U.S. Drunk driving accidents are responsible for 10,000 deaths every year. More than 230 children have been killed in drunk driving crashes in this past year. Drinking and driving costs more than $44 billion in deaths and damages annually. At the end of 2020, 26.8% of drivers that were killed or seriously injured in a crash had alcohol in their bloodstream. The consequences of driving under the influence are severe. A first offense DUI can cost $10,000 or more in fines and legal fees. Drunk driving accidents are statistically most likely to occur during the months of June, July, and August. About 68% of alcohol-related fatalities happen at night, and 28% happen during the daytime. In 2021, 65% of U.S. drivers surveyed said they were, quote, very or extremely concerned about drunk and distracted driving. And lastly, almost 10% of respondents aged 21 to 29 reported driving under the influence often or very often. Four days after Carrie's funeral, on May 7, 1980, Leitner founded Mothers Against Drunk Drivers, later renamed Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and began running the organization out of her Fair Oaks home. She quit her real estate job and used savings to establish the organization. As she expressed in a 1981 interview for People magazine, quote, this was not an unfortunate accident. Carrie was the victim of a violent crime. If my daughter had been raped or murdered, no one would say of the killer, there but for the grace of God go I. Death caused by drunk drivers is the only socially acceptable form of homicide. End quote. On August 17, 1980, Leitner officially launched MAD at a Sacramento press conference. Accompanied by representatives from the California Attorney General's office, the principal of her daughter's school and her daughter Serena, Leitner announced a statewide petition drive and called on Governor Jerry Brown to establish a commission to solve, not study, the issue of drunk driving. In the fall of 1980, Brown gave Leitner her statewide task force 
and she was a member. Within two years, nearly every state followed suit. Let's take a closer look at Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Enter Mothers Against Drunk Driving, or MAD, a powerhouse of a nonprofit organization spanning the United States, Canada, and Brazil. But MAD isn't just an acronym, it's a dynamic force on a mission. Imagine a group that not only aims to put the brakes on drunk driving, but also stands as a pillar of support for those touched by its tragic consequences. MAD's vision extends beyond the roads. It's about preventing underage drinking, crafting a narrative that pushes for stricter policies against impaired driving, whether it's fueled by alcohol or any other substance. This organization isn't content with just addressing the aftermath. It's actively working to change the narrative surrounding impaired driving, advocating for a safer and more responsible approach to being behind the wheel. MAD isn't just an organization, it's a movement for change. Across the vast landscape of the U.S., every state boasts at least one MAD office, but it's not just a nationwide affair. MAD's influence stretches northward with at least one office in every province of Canada. These aren't just offices, they're hubs of support, offering crucial victim services and a treasure trove of resources delving into the realm of alcohol safety. And here's the impact. MAD boldly declares that since its inception, drunk driving has seen a staggering 50% reduction. It's not just a claim, it's a testament to the tangible changes this organization has brought about. MAD isn't merely present across the map, it's actively shaping the narrative, driving down the statistics, and leaving an imprint on the fight against drunk driving that's hard to ignore. According to MAD's website, the mission of Mothers Against Drunk Driving is to end drunk driving, help fight drugged driving, and support the victims of these violent crimes, and to prevent underage drinking and driving. In 1984, MAD's advocacy reached new heights with the enactment of the National Minimum Drinking Age Act. This wasn't just any law. It wielded a federal penalty, initially a 5% hit to federal highway dollars, later cranked up to a formidable 10%. The message was clear. States that didn't raise the minimum legal age for purchasing and possessing alcohol to 21 would feel the financial repercussions. The stakes were high, but MAD's persistence paid off. The legal battleground saw a defining moment in 1987, when the United States Supreme Court, in the case of South Dakota v. Dole, gave the nod of approval to this groundbreaking law. The ripple effect was swift and profound. By 1988, every state and the District of Columbia had made the necessary adjustments. It wasn't just a legal victory, it was a triumph of advocacy, reshaping the drinking age landscape and leaving an enduring mark on the pursuit of safer streets. However, in 1985, Candace Leitner, the founder of MAD, made the decision to part ways with the organization. Reflecting on this shift, she expressed her sentiments in 2002, as documented by the Washington Times. Leitner remarked that MAD had evolved into a more neo-prohibitionist stance than she had initially intended or imagined. She clarified that her initial motivation in founding MAD was to address the problem of drunk driving, not to delve into broader issues related to alcohol. This revelation highlights a divergence in the organization's trajectory from its founder's original vision. Leitner then devoted herself to researching the science and laws surrounding drunk driving. At the time, completely uninvolved in politics or social reform and not even registered to vote, Leitner learned on her feet, meeting with lobbyists, California Highway Patrol representatives, and assembly members, attending courtroom hearings, and studying the California Vehicle Code from cover to cover. In Local Heroes, The Rebirth of Heroism in America, Leitner told author Bill Berkowitz that she never saw herself as a victim, but someone who wanted to address a problem. Quote, 
I never attempted to go public with my pain. What I attempted to do was to go public with the facts and talk about a solution. End quote. In October 1980, Leitner held a press conference on Capitol Hill, accompanied by Mike Barnes and Cindy Lamb, a Baltimore woman whose infant daughter was a quadriplegic after being hit by a repeat drunk driver earlier that year. She called on the President of the United States to form a commission to solve the impaired driving problem. President Reagan agreed and appointed Leitner a member. Leitner told the Statement Journal in September 1980, quote, I am not against drinking. I am for responsible drinking. We don't let people walk around with a loaded gun in our neighborhood, but we let them drive when they drink, end quote. Leitner's ability to think strategically and appeal to legislators across the aisle supported the passage of over 729 state laws and numerous federal laws between 1981 and 1986. She continues to advocate for anti-drunk, drugged, and distracted driving legislation as president of We Save Lives. Leitner believes the impaired driving problem is a local, state, and national problem. Her strategy was to deal with the problem on all three levels. She organized schools, community groups, and affected families into powerful national organizations and built alliances with government organizations, legislators, and industry groups. She has been recognized as a pragmatic activist, willing to work with unlikely allies and to listen to competing perspectives in order to meet a larger goal. Leitner generated continual interest from the media and did this more effectively than any citizen activist had done before, a strategy credited by the Harvard School of Public Health for significantly reducing motor vehicle deaths and death rates between 1980 and 1983. She reframed the impaired driving narrative, portraying reckless driving as the product of a culture devoid of personal responsibility. She shared her story and those of countless others, shedding light on victims who could be anyone's child, spouse, or parent, and humanized an issue that had previously been framed in faceless statistics. Candace used her life experiences to co-write Giving Sorrow Words, How to Cope with Grief and Get On with Your Life. The book guides readers through the grief process and shares extensive testimonials and strategies for coping with loss. It has a strong following and was praised as a comforting, insightful, and constructive resource. More recently, in 2014, Leitner founded We Save Lives, an international nonprofit coalition addressing the three Ds, drunk, drugged, and distracted driving, through legislative advocacy, media campaigns, consumer education, and coalition building. The organization has supported the passage of anti-distracted driving bills in several states and is the only national advocacy organization to initiate anti-drugged driving legislation. Candace's awards and honors are numerous, including 1985's World Almanac and Book of Facts, America's 25 Most Influential Women in 1985, and Life Magazine listed her as one of the original thinkers of the 80s. She was voted by the press as America's 25 Most Influential Women in America. There's more for a complete list of her accomplishments. Please visit her page at CandiceLeitner.com. Let's take a moment to listen to this audio clip from Candace. My 13-year-old daughter, Carrie, was killed by a drunk driver. She was thrown 125 feet, and she was left in the road to die. The man who killed her was out on bail from another hit-and-run drunk driving crash. And I took that pain, rage, and grief and started the largest anti-drunk driving organization in the world. Now, We Save Lives has expanded its efforts to include the three Ds, drunk, drugged, and distracted driving. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about her. And I don't miss her and wonder what would have happened if that man were not driving on that particular day. 
Even though drunk driving is no longer socially acceptable, people are still doing it. This is a choice people make. This is not an accident, it's a crime. Chances are you know someone who's been affected by the three Ds, or you know someone that you can keep from driving drunk. This, this to me, had such an impact. Uh, and and uh, I, especially using someone who had actually been convicted of a felony drunk driving. I will be forever grateful for his willingness to speak out and take responsibility for his actions. That doesn't happen very often. If someone had stopped Chris from drinking and driving, a father would be alive today, a family intact, and a young man wouldn't be speaking to you from prison. Take action now. Prevent the taking of a life. And please make sure you're not the one in the mirror. I hope you um, enjoyed today's episode or at least found it thought provoking. Um, to reiterate, Candace's focus is not on the morality of drinking or alcohol consumption. Um, it is strictly on the drunken, distracted, and drugged driving. Um, I'm sure someone you know has been affected by someone who chose to drive impaired. Um, about a year, almost two years now, my sister and brother in law. Um, were T-boned by a drunk driver who left them by the side of the road to die. Um, my brother-in-law lost his leg and had his a whole um, face and half his skull reconstructed. My sister-in-law, almost two years later, um, is still undergoing several surgeries to repair her leg and hip. Um, both had to stop work. Both are now disabled. The... Um, gentlemen involved uh, had no insurance, so um, they took a severe financial hit as well. So we can do better, we must do better, and it starts with dialogue. Um, if you need help with this issue, one resource is SAMHSA, S-A-M-S-A, -S -S Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. The national helpline is free and confidential, 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, they offer treatment referral and an information service uh, in English and Spanish for individuals and families facing mental and or sub substance use um, issues. If you have personally been affected by this issue and would like to share um, your experience to enlighten others, please send it to Mindset Matters Podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Our quote of the day is from Candace Leitner. She says, the road through grief is a rocky one. Traveling along it requires courage, patience, wisdom, and hope. I hope you'll join me for our next episode, which will be on the Chernobyl Three Divers, um, an interesting story that has recently become an HBO miniseries. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email mindsetmatterspodcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindsetmatterspodcast the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.